It's Edge um, AS15169. This is a brief update of what we are doing in Google about route filtering and uh, uh, BGP uh, security. Let me give you the background. About a, a year and a half ago or two years ago, we announced that we were going to use, we were going to apply stricter filters for BGP and to all the IRRs. Uh, and we would, um, but it took us uh, too long, more than we expected, more than we planned. We had to apply many controls in our network to be efficient, but we were close. And we always um, said that we were going to link our data and uh, that, uh, the, uh, that uh, we were starting to ask uh, our uh, clients to that they needed to have this data. So AS1519 would publish the data, but we and we ask the clients to have it updated. Where are we now? We are making prefixes from peers, but are not yet filtering, but we are very close to it. We are reviewing some traffic shifts uh, they are volumes of traffic that may change if we apply the filter. So we are being very cautious about it. We improve the information in our ISP portal in the BGP view that now shows more detailed information about invalid prefixes to ISPs. Now it tells you why it's invalid, for instance, if the um, autonomous system is not in the DNSSEC. So when we start uh, and as soon as we apply origin validation, that information will be there. We are using an automated system to publish uh, all the information of our IRR and the RPKI data. So it's a system that pushes the information to the two systems. And this is synchronized with the routing intent that is configured in our routing. So in theory, everything that we configure in our routers that will be announced needs to be configured in this database. And this must be reflected with the IRR and the ROAs. Maybe a month ago, we published uh, the uh, ROAs in RIPE and ARIN spaces, about 2,800 ROAs, that is approximately 95% of our prefixes. We still need some prefixes such as 888. However, the IPv6 part of the DNS has been signed. Uh, we still need the IPv4. This is because of the way that the general system works with the creation of certificates that space is now from uh, Aaron to Center Link, uh, and we are working with them, trying to see how to do it uh, efficiently and in a user-friendly way. So we're signing it is not the problem, but we have to maintain them. And uh, so we are working with them, and we hope in the near future, in, some, in a, a few weeks or months, to have it ready. And by the end of the, uh, well, we plan to do it by the end of, of uh, the year, but I don't want to promise it and then uh, uh, to keep uh, delaying it. We also work with manners. We joined manners for network operators, and we're always also part of the group that founded manners for CDNs and cloud. So. We are working also with the Internet Society and with some ISPs to make the system, the routing system, more reliable. So those are some statistics. So these are some of the statistics regarding the validity of the prefixes and how this has evolved from March to October. We have contacted about 1,000 ISPs in order to tell them that they have to do this directly. 
your email. And I think this is working in March, 86% of the global prefixes were valid in October. It's almost 90%, so this has been improving. You can see some of the statistics for the regions, ASPAC, Africa, LATAM, and I think I mentioned this in one of these meetings. In March, it was 69%, which was the lowest of the entire region. By July, this had increased to 76%. And this is thanks to the fact that LACNIC already has its RR, and this is one of the IRRs that we are using them. So this increased to 76%, it's now 78 in October. So we are improving. And this is very positive. So we believe that this is doing well. Now, what do you have to do in order to ensure that your routes will be accepted for us? Please check our PKI and the IRR so that you have the ASN route object, that route object. And it is important that if you provide this transit to other ASs, if you only announce routes of your own autonomous systems, then you don't need the AS. If you announce routes of a client that uses a different AS, then, then you have to create an AS set, and this AS set has to be documented in Peering DB because there's no other way in which we can know that, a, that AS set, which is called AS Google, belongs to the autonomous system with this number. So Peering DB serves as a link for the ASN, and then you say, which is your AS set, so we can go and connect that and then configure this in our system. And if you have access to the ISP portal, please check the invalid prefixes in the BGP to see which is the reason that might explain this. We have some documentation here which explains what an IRR is, how to create objects, which databases we accept, and also some information as to why we do this and how you can go about this. Then we have some public resources, such as the RR Explorer of the RR NOG. And there's a lot of information on these prefixes, whether they're valid, if there are ROAs or not. The RIPE and RIS also has interesting information and you know what things have been done properly and which not. And I didn't include this here, but Hurricane Electric has pgp.he.net, which you can also verify in order to find prefixes by autonomous system. So I'm running out of time. My own That was my own timer. So I will start here. So basically, this is what I had to share with you. Thank you, Arturo. We have a question, not through the Q&A, but through the chat from Thomas Lynch. He says, these percentages include RR, not only ROA. It doesn't include RPKI, it just IRR. RPKI will be measured later, and the statistics I showed you only are for IRRs. We have no more questions for you, Arturo. Would you like to make any final comment? No, this is, please ask, verify your information. If you have any questions, you can check NOG at google.com and then we can clarify any questions you might have and please um, although we took some time we will be implementing this and hopefully this will be as soon as possible these are no empty words